Here, we will share with you information regarding the Labrador Retriever history. Please watch this video completely for the best information about this topic, and I hope that you will learn a lot about it. And if you are new to our channel then please like and subscribe our channel for more amazing videos. The Labrador Retriever's earliest origins are found across our northern border, in the Canadian province of Newfoundland. If that sounds a bit confusing to geography buffs, that's because it is, yes, the Labrador territory after which the breed is named is actually northwest of the island of Newfoundland. And, yes, there already is another breed from Newfoundland, called, logically enough, the Newfoundland. To sort through these seeming contradictions, we have to rewind about 500 years, when enterprising Europeans were finding their way to the Canadian coastline, long before any European nation planted its flag on Canadian territory, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and English fishermen were venturing to its Atlantic coast, presumably bringing their dogs with them. These various breeds commingled on the huge but isolated island, creating a land race that became known as the St. John's Dog, after the capital of Newfoundland. The St. John's Dog can no longer be found today, save for the bronze statues that stand in Harborside Park in the city from which their name derived. These dogs of Newfoundland came in various sizes, the larger of which became the eponymous Newfoundland, and the smaller one the dog we are discussing here. In short order, these prototypical Labrador Retrievers became well known for their infatuation with water, and their skill operating in it. Working in Newfoundland's burgeoning fisheries, they hauled nets and long lines, dived for cod that had slipped off the hook, even retrieved the hats of fishermen. The short-haired dogs were reportedly preferred over their longer-coated brethren, as the ice did not accumulate on their water-resistant coats. As a whole, these dogs were black, with dramatic tuxedo markings on their faces, chests, and legs. Newfoundland's fishermen were justifiably proud of their dogs. So after their ships packed with salted cod crossed the ocean and docked in pool on the southern English coast, they had their clever dogs perform for the gathered crowds, having them retrieve objects tossed into the water. These dogs are remarkable for their diving powers, wrote Irish dog authority H.D. Richardson in 1847. I saw one some years ago with an officer, who was quartered at Portobello Barracks, Dublin, which dived repeatedly to the bottom of the canal, between the locks, when full of water, and fetched up such stones, etc., as were thrown in. Eventually, the sale of these dogs became a lucrative sideline for enterprising Canadian sailors, and the St. John's dog became a popular export to England. There, it was incorporated into various dog lines, becoming the progenitor for all the modern British retrievers, from flat coats to curly coats. One of the appreciative onlookers at those harborside displays in pool was the Earl of Malmesbury, who concluded that the dogs would excel at duck hunting at his Heron Court estate. In short order a breeding program was established, and it is due to this titled family that the early name, Labrador Dog, became associated with the breed. That's it in this video if you like our video then hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more amazing videos.